time is up, you lie. Good morning, everyone, and welcome. Welcome to Juma Game Reserve here in the Sabi Sands. We're about to head out for our three-hour morning game drive. With all sorts of excitement that possibly await. My name is Mark. Sebastian is on camera and Patrick in final control. And I've just been wandering around looking at a, a lot of hyena tracks that we have here this morning on this open area we call Quarantine. Hyenas have been busy. I wonder what else has been busy. A bit of a hazy, smoky, I don't know whether it's misty or smoky or hazy. Kind of strange. There was a beautiful sky this morning just before sunrise. In fact, at 5 o'clock, there was the most gorgeous moon setting in the west. Clear, clear skies. And as soon as the sun rose, this cloud came in. So, well, we'll just have to see her see what the day brings us as far as weather is concerned. There might be more moving in from the south. The sun is a little bit obscured at the moment behind that cloud, but it does make for a beautiful morning. So join me and let's go and find some animals and flowers and insects and spiders and lizards. What else? Snakes, if we can. Would be nice. We haven't had a snake on camera for a while. things, find what the bush has to offer, anything we can, see. anything of interest. Well, there's a bit of the sun popping up above that cloud through that dead tree before we go. It's the kind of, sort of, missed the sunrise. Is that a heart shape in the tree on the right hand side? Yes, it is. Sort of not uh, uh, slightly arty heart. Arty heart. Okay, Seb, let's go find something. I've got an idea up my sleeve. That is beautiful. Skeleton of a tree. Oh, I like it. Yeah, it just keeps getting better. Big pressure change yesterday, atmospheric pressure. It kind of accounts for change in temperature today. It can sometimes signify rain on the way. There's a 
another dead tree that would have looked like. That makes any sense. Morning, Tex. Very good. Where are you off to? you from the lodge this morning. Only you coming out from the lodge this morning. Okay, all the formalities over with for the early morning beginning. I'm going to start by going over the damn wall. This must be a little bit of a mist, I think, because I'm looking at a lot of these little tropical tent spider webs, and they're all showing tiny little droplets of water. So it was a damp night last night. A bunch of hyena tracks. At least three individuals on this road. Oh, look at this mist. Little belt of mist. We're now just going to sink down into this little belt. We maybe improve that gorgeous sunrise even more. Not very thick in the mist. see it from the slow. So a wonderful day was had by all yesterday and nobody missed out on the dogs unless you weren't watching Wild Earth and the Safari Channel. Bastion, perhaps the only one that got to see them twice yesterday. Well, I'm going to do Mgubu Road because I want to have a look at the tracks of theirs as well as hyenas. possible that being a cool night, quite possible that they all bedded down for the night. Wild dogs are predominantly diurnal. In fact, up until last year July, I considered wild dog to be rather strictly diurnal and not active at night at all. 
And then last year we had the Wild Dog Den camera. Lo and behold, the day we go live, the day we went live with the camera was the day the pups came out of the den for the first time. We had been monitoring things. And it was pure coincidence. It was almost as though they knew it was time for their debut. Or the powers of the universe conspired to put us all together in the same place at the same time. And it was through that exercise over the next few months when we were watching those little pups, those pups at the den. It was then that we noticed that adults would go out hunting at night. Now last night was the most beautiful bright moon. And I mean, I've seen cheetah hunting, cheetah who are also predominantly diurnal, almost strictly diurnal. I've seen cheetah hunting under full moon. So, there's a remote possibility that they could have carried on running. <coughs> and could have even been hunting. It takes a lot to feed 20 something dogs, I don't know, I think it could be 21, I think 11 pups, 10 adults. hear it. Call of the water thick me. Interesting. There were elephant here last night and judging by some of these tracks a very little elephant was here last night Now heading north, up the eastern side of Bifuzuk, um, Bifuzuk, this is me, Gary Dam, Gary Dam on our left, we're on our way up towards the cut line on Mbubu Road. Dogs up there. Okay, so uh, we just missed them on quarantine. Okay. We're going to go back that way in a minute, but I have to check on something first. One of the re main reasons I came this way, all this, these hyena tracks, lots of hyena tracks.
Excuse me. Sounds like the dogs are up on Zoe's road. There are dog tracks here. They were running up and down here. But I knew that. That's why I came here. My idea was to come here and try and track them from here. But one of the vehicles heading up towards the gate to fetch staff found them now on Gar on Buitela Access Road as it comes in near Zoe's Road Junction and I think Henry will go there to find them. But you see, as it was getting dark last night I happened to find myself a little bit further up this road with a hyena. A hyena, a particularly strong smell of rotting meat and then suddenly all the adult dogs came trotting by and they showed some interest in a termite mound we have to go back and investigate and it should be around here somewhere pretty thick in fact there's the hyena and I'm right I think this is the den it has the smell very strong smell of hyena pastings of rotting meat now the biggest problem with this den is it's almost inaccessible because it's on the other side of all these bushes we've got to find a way in here <coughs> I've seen a hyena at the entrance. Looks like the entrance to this den. I'm not going to get in this way. Okay. this is the dead almost 100% positive and you know what's so uncanny about it it's virtually next to the road and nobody's found it yet but it's understandable it's pretty thick around it's huge termite mound and the entrance is on the other side of it away from the road Yeah. No, I'm not going 
look through there. Mobile. How much uh, Which way does my guts mobile? From the west side the strongest, strongest I can, actually we could probably squeeze through this way. Let's try and get to the wild dog. Somebody might have missed him yesterday. Uh, okay, they've crossed a big drainage line going to the south and they can't follow them. And evidently they're on the run. We're too far to. Disturb you. I know you probably want to go to sleep right now. Hello, pretty girl. The hyena did finally. After well how long? <laughs> Hello. Can we see your babies now, please? Bring them out to play. actually had those, some of those wild dogs running all over this termite mound last night. I couldn't get in here and it was getting dark. And I didn't even sleep last night because I was so eager to come and get, get here and try and discover this. Protective. She could even be suckling right now. I'm going to sit quietly. I'm not going to talk much for a while. 
I want to just sit here quietly and see if maybe a head pops up. Imagination or is that dust coming out? Okay, perhaps you had a question. I saw something on the right of her. Here we go. Here we go. <laughs> Fantastic. Here we go, everybody. She's getting sleepy. I thought I saw a puff of dust. Look at that little thing. Or something, or she's watching something. Two. There's the second one. Look at that. Two little bears. What you watching, girls? Your mother coming back. She's looking just beyond the back of the vehicle. Should be like one of the hyenas returning to the den.
the shape <coughs> we need a we need I don't know if I'll get it. Be a little bit higher than me. That is one of those little ones pops up with head. Oh there's another one coming. Here's one of the youngsters from last year. Yeah. Coming back. It'll be interesting to see some interaction here. As this little one comes back to the den. It's damp. Probably grasses are wet. It's been wandering around. Looks like it's Hello, little one. You don't remember us, do you? No. There's a time when the, the youngsters used to come up to us and sniff, the, chew on the tires. Probably smelling the wild dog, so it's a little bit nervous. Possibly also a bit nervous because we're here. Could be. Ahina generally don't really pay us pay us much attention. <clears throat> I'm lie down. I might be wondering why I'm so silent, but I really would rather just be quiet for a while, just to see if the little ones are going to be a bit more active. They're the most sensitive at the moment. This would probably be the first time they've seen a vehicle properly.
Of course, it's going to be another matter to get out of one. Okay. <clears throat> Hello, Lynn. Greetings to Lynn in Canada. Lynn, who's has monitored hyena dens over the years here in Gary. Lynn, yes, this is just near Gary Dam. This is just off from Vubu Road. In fact, there's that little track off from Vubu Road that runs down towards the lodge to room 8. We've been down that little track on numerous occasions to see Karula and the boys on a kill. And this den is... It's just in the bush at the junction, just north of the junction between Mbubu Road and that little road down to the dam. So it could be, I guess, a den that has been used in the past. There doesn't seem to be any evidence of a previous road or track in here as there have been on some of the other dens where there's been a lot of vehicle movement coming in and out. Maybe you can tell me, Lynn, if you know of this den being used before. lot of activity up on quarantine. I can hear hyena. It sounds like I can hear. A oh, lot of hyena noise. Um, Lynn, no, this isn't floppy ear. I can hear a lot of hyena activity other side of camp. She's listening to it as well. And the youngster's just taken off in that direction. dog must have made a kill. Maybe we better get out of here and go there. Yeah, sounds like a wild dog. Let's go. Sounds like this could be a fight. Wild dog hyena. later or another day. Not 
easy. I mean, who was it? It was yesterday. It was Tara. That got a gap through. Weren't you yesterday showing Warren House to the team? Yes, you said. You said. Well, it's not FC, but it's the corner of the yeah, corner of Warren House. Um, gosh. A little bit awkward. the wild dog made a kill and the hyena tried to steal it or something mission accomplished what what did oh there also listening to the noise coming from the east another member of the clan hearing this commotion and heading down towards the lodge and probably run past the lodge onto quarantine that kind of noise is going to bring hyena from all over in fact it probably was a call for arms or a call to arms in a sense wasn't a very typical whoop of a hyena or a very high pitched whining call could well be in that granny's line west of quarantine another place that Karula and the boys have made many kills been on a number of kills.
Dogs are on the move in different places. Three of them have just been picked up now on Wuyatela Access Road. We're just going to run around quarantine to the south where this noise was coming from. a wild dog have the ability to bring down a very large animal uh, you know like a wildebeest or a zebra or a kudu <coughs> and in fact they would need something the size of a kudu for each individual to get a sufficient amount of meat to replenish the energy that they've spent during the kind of a hunt that they Generally, wild dogs go for impala. Impala are one of their main prey sources. Now, when a, a pack of dogs take down an impala after a pretty long hunt, although they might be very successful in terms of the number of successful kills as opposed to the number of attempts that they make, the amount of energy replenishment with an impala that has to be divided up into so many dogs doesn't really satisfy them in terms of as Impala right here in fact the bush price cycle was thought that this is where the dogs were but obviously not here because these Impala have been just they're just grazing and browsing quite happily Ephraim. Well, we can or we can't. We have to wait and see. 
There were only two or three individuals found now on Wheatel Access Road, so the pack might have split up. Um, and we're almost due west of the lodge and hence due west of the den. There we go. Lots of tracks on top of my tracks from this morning. Hyena. Take Zoe's road. Hey, from Munger. One can't, <coughs> can't cover ground fast enough when there's something like this. When we were sitting there, what was sounding like, well, apart from the hyena, but the commotion that I was trying to pick up amongst all the other noise in my head and in my ears, no, not so much noise in my head, but it was a confrontation. That kind of a thing can be over in seconds. Where maybe individuals decide to go their own way because they can't afford to, to get injured. They can't afford a, a major fight. from coming? Uh, what's that in there? Okay, copy. They've gone back more already. We come the wrong way. <laughs> we should have just stayed on the Mbubu Road and come around. Oh well, we'll do Galaga shortcuts, we'll try and get there. So, there we go. Okay, now we've got a little drive to do up Galaga shortcuts. Interesting that they might be, that they're back in the same place as yesterday. They're doing loops, they're doing big loops. And it seems to be that they might be investigating the area. Now yesterday morning, the two dogs that we found, that Latara found, also did a very big loop down into the south. They went from, let me think, where were they found? Filament's cut line, Filament's dip. Quarantine, in fact. Ran down through the dip along Filament's cut line, down onto Gowrie Main, did a very big loop down Gowrie Main, back onto Weaver's Nest. If you want me to repeat those, please let me know. If you're following the map, you can draw these loops, in fact. Yesterday, once again, some of the adults did a big hunting loop, and it seems this morning, again, doing another loop. Now, what this could be doing is 
getting a general feel for the area, the presence of game, the potential hunts. They're not going to stay in an area for very long because they'll advertise their presence too much with the amount of hunting that they're likely to do. I mean, last year Patrick and I caught up with some dogs after doing some pretty fancy tracking and it was summertime. I remember there were green grasses. I can't remember when it was. Maybe somebody can help me out. There was a time last year we found probably the same pack. And it was only after we'd been with them that we found previous kills from that same day. And they'd made about five kills that day. It was, a, I think it was an impala they were, ooh, elephant track. It was an impala they were busy with. in the same alleys that with the dam last night. Babblers are laughing at me. Like a 15 degree incline and Gunda won't climb it. Seem to think that it's sucking air into its projector. Never a dull moment. Monday today for us here in the bush. And my ears are still detecting pressure changes in the atmosphere. I wonder how elephants deal with it. Elephants also have to Oh, there's a daker on top of the termite mount. I wonder if elephants also have a pressure variation between their in inner ear and their external air pressure. When, you have, when you're flying and when you're changing height, you've got to equalize, like when you're diving, if any of you are divers, you have to equalize, you have to pressure push pressurized air through your, your station tube into your ear to equalize your inner ear pressure with the atmospheric pressure. That's quite painful for elephants if they change altitude. My ears are quite sensitive to it. I can be driving a car, just driving down a hill. I would have to change my ear pressure. Anyone with that for or open lock? Okay, 
back up in time. Yeah, otherwise the Kumile Kaya Yami is in Bubu Road. Yeah, go, go. Right, it's right next to that in Glele that goes down to room 8 from Google Road. From the Uber Road in Glele that goes down to room 8. Uh, it's a big schedule, it's just north of that junction, but it's very difficult to get in there. That's the primitive journey. Uh, I might put in a bit of effort yesterday afternoon. Um, also, I just, it was, if anything, the dogs that showed it to me. Um, I saw two my people on there. Hey, well done, my friend. Um, so you said that little, the little guys down to watch the people when you get in my room, Yeah, affirmative. It's at the junction. It's sort of 20 meters from that Ndele that goes down to room 8 and about 20 meters in from Ndugu Road. As you do that little turn on the northern side, there's a big termite mound that doesn't look like anything, but on the western side uh, is the entrance. Going away, Fred. Have to be transparent about these things. There's a wild dog. For those of you who missed the pups and the dogs, Yesterday, here they are. Somehow they seem to want to hang out here. Good. Yeah. Very often in the past, our only sighting of wild dog have been as they scream across the property. We get a few minutes visual, if that. And now, well, they stretch between here and before the cut line. Hello, how are you this morning, K9? Mrs. Wild Dog. Need to get some pictures of each one of them. Can I get your photo, please? Stop, turn, look to the camera. You know, each individual has a very specific pattern, a very specific combination of the colors that wild dog generally are and you'll notice the white on the tail is very different in each individual it would be nice to be able to keep a little bit of a, uh, a record of all the individual I'm looking at I can just see ears in this little burnt patch of the fire break there are ears everywhere sticking up and looking around and hopefully we'll be able to wander through here and be able to see some more individuals She's lying down now. Yeah, we'll leave her. We'll go and find some others. I believe some of the youngsters were playing with the head of a daker. Uh, Henry, come in. Are you with me, Dutch? Okay, I'll come join you there. Okay. Thank you, madam. No, now you look at me. Okay. And notice the right ear has got two pretty heavy nicks out of the ear. Pretty girl. 
you know, yesterday morning Tara was following those two dogs and I think a lot of people were getting worried that the vehicles were pushing the dogs and it might have seemed that way. Look, there's a... I wonder if this has got anything to do with them. Termite mound here with the burrow system that maybe they... it looks like they may be... who knows, maybe they... I don't know. Maybe they're going to den around here. They're really den in the winter months. Oh, but we are so lucky. Hello, madam. You're a pretty girl. Look at you. Okay, where the other one had white runt on most of the tip of her tail. She's only got a little bit of white in her tail. She's been running. Well, they were up on quarantine, Zoe's Road, they've been doing some chasing, so I dare say they are a little bit out of breath, some of them, those of them that have been running. Um, we need to go actually to the pups, I see them through the trees here, they're evidently tugging at a... Let's go, we can come and do some individual photographing. Wild dog everywhere. I can't get through here because it's the wall of wild dog. This is fantastic. Absolutely incredible. Like a kid in a candy shop. I don't know where to go first. I don't know who to look at first. But I want to find whoever it is that's got the head of this daker that they're talking about. I was just saying, you know, yesterday those two dogs were on a mission and the vehicles were behind them. Hello. Another female. You got a tatty here, girl. Pretending to ignore me. Turns her head. And, and you, oh, look at you, you're gorgeous. Oh, wow. You are so beautiful. It's got the most prettiest face, this one. One at the back there, seven, here's number eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. Wow. Wow. Okay, sorry, dude. That looks like a skinny male in the back there. There's a big male. He could be alpha male. And the very tatty ear. I know, I'm just saying there is, there is, and there's no way the camera can follow what I'm talking about. But, yeah, there's the cub, pups, cub, pups. Let's go to the pups that play. We can come back to these resting individuals and maybe try and do something about Oh, on the road, they're playing on the road. <laughs> Hello, dogs. Like on Pictus. Hello, puppies. Three puppies that don't want to be playing. Four, five, six, seven, eight, there's nine pups here. Sorry, little one. Okay. Just off the road to the front there. So we're just going to stop here next to the most of these pups. There's an adult chasing some of them. Let's see what's happening here. 
I don't know, I'm guessing maybe. Oh, I can smell them. Can you smell them? Mm. A couple playing in the back there. Adult. Probably a youngster, a low ranking adult. Wants to get that skull. Oh, they're so good. Look at these little things. Adults having a game with the youngsters. Now, where it is now, there's one pup that's got a head of a daker. Obviously, not wanting to share. <laughs> Probably a sub adult that wants to play with these pups more than an proper yeah, more than I an saw, adult. Hmm? I saw the Daker head there. Yeah. There you go. It's got the trophy. There'll be a tug of war and see who can get the trophy next. There's a male, that one, that adult that's coming in to play with them now and have it investigate. One of the males of the pack. Collective noun for wild dog. Somebody who can help me out. <laughs> He's the winner. Yeah. I'm hoping you can hear all this whining and cackling. Not quite cackling, but whining and chirping as they play. Sharp teeth, so the adults. <laughs> Here he goes. Look at this. They've probably been, it could be a new one, but they did kill a daker last night. Patrick and Sebastian saw them chasing it. Did you see them chase it? Yes. Oh, you didn't see them. No, I wouldn't be able to see them. Those two adults, so different in coloration. See if we can get a little bit closer to them yep. playing with that skull.
It is a little bit gruesome, the way they're playing with this trophy of theirs. I don't know where to point the camera at. <laughs> There's so much interaction going on. Some adults that, were, that are playing with two of the pups here in front of us. Four of them tugging at that head now. Yeah, boy. First off, thanks to those of you sending in collective nouns. The pack of dogs is, is pretty much the, the norm, but I thought maybe there would be something special. And somebody, I forget who it was, it said a pallet of wild dog. Now, since they're called painted wolves, and it does allude to painting, the pallet sounds nice. Paint your palette beige and black and white and brown and Sassy Sisters are asking a question. I wonder which one sent that in. It would be L. Um is this one large family? Is it different families? Do they ever travel on their own? Um, a pack is a family. A pack is not necessarily, obviously, not all related individuals. You know, you find, generally speaking, a higher number of males in a pack than females. But within the pack, you're going to have an alpha male and female who are going to be the breeding pair, and then all the subordinates that help out with the hunting and bringing meat back to the family. The pups will all be from one mother, the alpha female. And as to whether they, if they ever travel on their own, very, very seldom. I mean, you might get two, like we saw yesterday, two individuals being, acting as scouts. They seem to have based themselves here. There is a termite mound towards the back, towards, well, behind us, on the other side of the fire break, that I guess they might have investigated as a safe haven, if need be. Um, I'm, I haven't been in this area for very long, but it could be that in the past there was a den site there, quite possible. Um, they're not going to be denning now, obviously, because of these pups. These pups are all still just being raised, so they're not going to likely have new pups and den now. Yeah.
ये बो Heather, hi there, Heather. How are you doing? Hope you're doing okay. I'm thinking of you. Heather wants to know if, you know if the dogs find a hyena den, what's likely to transpire. Well, they did. They found a hyena den last night, and no hyena were around. They sniffed around the entrance. It was getting very, kind of dark. I didn't have a spotlight. Here comes another adult, just by the way, coming up the road. Looks like it's been out scouting around. Um, the hyena pups, cubs, could be in danger. Ooh. <laughs> this could be the dominant male that's just come in. And I don't know. Alpha male usually has a very, very thick neck. He's usually a much bigger dog. Uh, I'd somehow I doubt it. The way he was approaching those pups, the, the pups whined. Now, two other adults coming to greet him. And the hassle these poor pups. Definitely lower ranking adults because these pups are actually dominating them. And that sort of cry wolf whining is an attempt to have these these older dogs back off. Because they know that if mum comes along if they're caught hassling the pups and mum comes along they're gonna get a reprimand. kind of like having a bunch of kids, you know, you, you, you reprimand one kid, that kid's going to pass it on to the next youngest kid and the next youngest kid and eventually the youngest is going to get the brunt of it, to some degree, but in dog society, it's not so much age as much as it is hierarchy, and if you are a youngster born to the alpha female, you are higher in some respects than some of the lower ranking males and females within the pack. But getting back to getting back to to Heather's question, um, the hyena would be able to hold its own if there was an adult at the den, and definitely it would protect the pups, the cubs, the hyena youngsters. Without any adults at the den, as there was last night. The dog sniffed around, they looked in at the entrance, they didn't dare go in, I don't think they wanted to because I guess they weren't sure. With, maybe there was a low growl emanating from within that kept them at bay, I don't know. There's no real way of knowing what can happen. It depends on how many dogs, it depends on how many hyena, it depends on who's home. people in chat asking how old these youngsters are. I'm guessing that they're probably about three or four months. I was thinking about that when we got here because last year with the hyena den camera, uh, not hyena, the, the camera at the dog den that we had, we were able to watch them every day for a number of months until they left that den and it was about, I think, this age when, when they left the den. Those pups. I don't know if you can hear that whining sound.
Sarah wants to know if they breed once or twice a year. Only once, Sarah. And generally they'll they den around May, June, kind of mid-winterish. Um, it's sort of generally when they they like you to to have pups. Everybody's settling down now. They're getting bored with that head. And I think as the pups are getting bored with the head, so are some of the adults getting interested. There's a male coming in now. Strong submissive behavior by the pups. Yeah, that's what some of these adults have been waiting for. But as I say, the pups do have a little bit of a command over some of the adults. Well, most of the adults, of course. They also, they all lower ranking than the alpha, alpha male and alpha female. So the, being, the pups being youngsters of the alpha male and female are able to dominate some of the adults. So far, I still haven't seen a female that I can call the, the matriarch, the alpha female. Cool. 
could be that the alpha pair are out somewhere. And that's why everybody's hanging around, waiting for them to come back. <laughs> oh, three adults coming in now to gang up on the top. They just want to steal that head. There we go. <laughs> but the youngsters. If the, if the alpha female was here, she would come in and she would nip all three of these adults. So these pups are holding their own against three adults. got sharp, sharp little teeth and that's one part of it.
adults got bored with it. Pam in Vancouver. Interesting question. Wanting to know if some of these dogs are going to move on. And uh, what happens, what circumstances occur to prevent inbreeding? Well, generally, there are individuals that oh, leave the children alone. It's mine, it's mine, it's mine. Big game now. Adults are now joining in. The pups have got it back. Two pups and then six adults. There's mum. I can see she's just next to me now. It looks like it could be the alpha female because it looks like she's been lactating. Coming past us in a minute, she's coming to see. Funny how some of the adults lie down at the, behind us, eh? oblivious to all of this. Here comes a male. Adult number seven. I don't know where that female went now. Um, not just yet. Um, now this kind of this mobbing tactic that we've just witnessed is actually quite interesting because this, this kind of typical of early morning behavior among dogs is to form these little loose uh, um, coalitions, as it were, with individuals and mob others. And it's in this, this group mobbing. Wow, a whole lot of them. It looks like they're on the move. Yeah. That must have been an alpha pair, or the alpha, I don't know. Yeah, one of the adults has now taken that. There's another male coming past us now. Yeah, the, pup, the whole pack is now on the move. Adults behind us are starting to get up. I'm going to get your question in a sec.
in this early morning ritual that they do where they eventually get up and they start grouping and, and a, one group will mob another group or you'll get a couple that'll pair up just like those two pups were pairing up and then you get some adults doing that sort of mobbing there we go dogs on the run we're not going to have them for much longer i don't think they're heading down towards sandy patch north on the run on the trot time to go actually there's a purpose in that sometimes it is actually to weed out weak individuals within the pack and they will actually kill an individual if it proves that to be to show some form of weakness I mean, it was 